Hey guys, I hope you're well. When I say that, I mean it. I'm thinking of you guys. I hope you're well. Um, a lot of people say, hey, how you doing? And they don't, don't even pause for a reply. <laughs> um, you're looking at my expanded scale voltmeter that sits on top of my rig. I made this voltmeter for a power supply project that I'm still going to do my linear supply project. And boy, I want it more and more as time goes by. I'm getting sick of the switch mode supply you'll be seeing in a moment. This expanded scale voltmeter is connected to the Molex connector at the input of the rig. Um, okay, we're looking at the power supply side of the connector not the rig side. And um, the reason I did this, because, uh, <laughs> let's see, uh, uh, one day I, uh, <laughs> I uh, had the rig connected to my dummy load, you see, and I decided to transmit a 100 watt carrier into the <laughs> into the dummy load as it were and the rig rebooted I couldn't believe it I immediately thought oh boy something going on with my power supply right well <clears throat> right excuse me I'm sorry for that right now we are connected to the um to the um dummy load we're on the 20 meter band and um it's set for 100 watts Typically this rig, it draws different amount of current on different bands. I did some testing back when, back in the day, after I got the rig. And um, typically like 17 amps. That's the figure I'm going to use for the following video, for example, only. Um, okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to key down and uh, the voltage drop you see is not the power supply. The power supply, if when I throw my, a voltmeter on the power supply output terminals, it drops one tenth of a volt under full power with this rig. Okay, one tenth of a volt. But now we're looking at the other end of the power cable, man, and I think it's only 10 gauge. And in my opinion, that was a big mistake on the part of Yesu. That was uh, cheapening out, and uh, it's clearly too small. So we're look we're going to look at the voltage drop on this end of the uh, power cable. You ready? Let's look. Twelve point three two volts. Hi, Blitzy. Blitzy's uh, he's been crying. I hope he'll let me make the video. Okay, let's look at that again. 12.3 volts, we'll call it. Okay. Earlier when I tested this, sorry it went out of focus, it was 12.2 volts. Um, so anyway, one day I was using the rig and it rebooted, right? <laughs> and uh, I couldn't believe it, man. When you're using single sideband, you, this is an analog meter. It won't catch peaks. It will not catch peaks. If I can reach around you, I'll click the rig over to... Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Wrong button. Upper side band. Dummy load. 20 meters. Set the, uh, enough mic gain to get full ALC. Testing. One, two... Test, test, test. The ASU shows 90 watts on peaks. Test, test. Single sideband. Okay, but one day the rig rebooted. I'm going to take you off the tripod and show you what I did to figure out what it was. Hang on. This is my power supply. Three 5 volt switch modes power supplies, each rated at. Uh, 40 amps connected in series each turned down to 4.6 volts output 13.8 volts connected to these 
battery posts, these lead battery posts, because those clamps are what came with the rig on this end of the power cable. This is the rig's fuse connector, or fuse holders. The zip tie wasn't on there before I, I figured out what the problem was. I added it for strain relief. Now this rig hasn't been used a whole lot out and about, a little bit back in my POTA days, right? The first thing I did was took my voltmeter and connected uh, the probes to those clamps. Set the rig to CW, 100 watts, keyed down. Oh, yeah, right? It dropped a tenth of a volt. Like I'd expect. You know, and uh, in my testing, I was doing some carrier testing, not a lot. Might have sent maybe a minute and a half worth of carrier. The expanded scale voltmeter up on the rig was now dropping to ten and a half volts type of thing. And at this point, you could feel the power cable was getting just, just barely noticeably warm to the touch. Indicator. The wire gauge is too light. We're dropping excessive voltage. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. I sent a carrier. I grabbed the fuse block, twiddled it around. No change. Turned off the rig, pulled the fuses out, popped them in and out a few times to wipe the contacts a bit, popped them back in, turned the rig on, looked at the expanded scale voltmeter, sent a 100 watt carrier, and it dropped to what you see you just saw. It dropped to an amount that is normal. Those fuse contacts were, were are bad. They were oxidized. They were a little bit a little bit too black to the uh to the look. They looked a little too black for my comfort, man. And uh they need to be cleaned maybe with a soft brass wire, brass wire brush. Better yet, a pencil eraser and some contact cleaner or whatever. It's a failure point. I stand back up. After sending those carriers, that fuse block was quite warm to the touch. It was quite warm to the touch. After reseeding the fuses several times, the voltage drop was as expected now, as you saw it. That is a huge failure point and a big uh, trip ruiner, a deal breaker. If you didn't know about that, didn't know what to do, and you're out doing your POTA thing and your rig starts rebooting, what are you going to do? You know? Uh, hang on a second. I show you. These engineering notes brought to you by WellCare of Michigan. Suckers dry of retirees' money. Ooh, I digress. Don't mind the uh, Superhead Diplexer notes. Oh no, I need my rubber band. You're going to fall off the tripod. Hang on. I pause. <sighs> As we were. The Superhet Diplexer, Product Detector Diplexer notes, if anybody care to talk about that, I'd love to. And I'm serious about that. Scribbling some things out, pretending somebody would like to see it. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Yeah, welcome to my world. I need a pointer. What? This will do. Look at the top line. We don't need the pointer. I told you that it was dropping to like ten and a half volts when I looked over at the rig, and it was not rebooting, but it but it must have been close. <laughs> and the fuse connectors, the fuse holders were quite warm. Let's take eleven volts for an example. If the power supply dropped to thirteen point seven volts at those clamps. And I saw 11 volts at this end of the power cable. It dropped 2.7 volts. 
it dropped for let's call it 46 watts of power there was 46 watts of heating going on along that power cable with the vast majority happening in that fuse connector the fuse holder right and um in a in, in now um, let's for example say that the voltage at that uh, molex connector drops to 12.3 volts from 13 point that's 1.4 volts okay guys that's still 24 watts being dissipated along that power cable including the fuse holders man that the amount of power being lost and it's not tri trivial if you're operating portable with a battery that's wasted energy yeah. hmm. hang on I'd be right back but you pissed off hang on. okay anyway um, the stock AC power cable dissipates 24 watts along its length that's ridiculous that's excessive in my opinion it's it's real wasted energy and it could be reduced greatly I, a if Yesu would have used eight gauge wire instead of that ten gauge, I think that's what they used. If I'm wrong and it's eight gauge, then they should have used six. Nice supple, soft, cop rated copper. Um, it should be two gauge sizes smaller, larger <laughs> than what it is. Yeah, and you could do the same by by making up your own power cable for your rig. Okay, guys, hang on. For the last time, I pause you. I hope that video was in focus. <laughs> I hope Litzy lets me edit the video. <laughs> I hope somebody will watch it. Thanks for your time, guys. I hope you're well. Take care. Get on 10 meters. Man, it's wide open. Worldwide. That reminds me, man. You got your wire head. I'm worldwide and I'm stepping. The maintenance of radio broadcasting equipment employs a large number of workers known as technicians. It is their job to see that the apparatus is kept in perfect working order. In the stations, we find these men at work on the amplifiers and on the power equipment.